Hello everyone, welcome to lab 8. In this lab, we are going to discuss uh, numerical differentiation and integration methods. This is very useful when we do not know the analytical functions and we have only data sets. There are three numerical differentiation methods, forward finite difference, backward finite difference and centered finite difference. As you can see uh, from the picture, there are a number of data points on the line along uh, x direction. It starts from i equals to zero, where the data points are uh, all equally distant, which is represented by h. So for forward difference uh, scheme, if we want to determine the derivative at a certain point, let's say point i, we need to know the value of the function at i as well as one point forward, i plus one. Then uh, we divide uh, uh, the difference of the function values uh, by the difference of those points or the, this is called the step size to have to evaluate uh, the derivative. Next, uh, for backward finite difference, to evaluate the derivative at point i, we are required to know the value of the function at point i and one step back, that is i minus one. Then, in a similar way as forward scheme, we can get the derivative, but for the center difference uh, scheme, uh, as the name uh, implies, we need to know the function values at both one step forward and backward data points, and then divide the difference twice the step size. We can determine different orders of derivatives. In the previous slide, we discussed basically first order derivatives with uh, three respective approaches. So for first order derivative, we need actually two data points. For second order derivative, we require three data points. For example, if we want to evaluate the derivative at uh, data point xi for forward difference scheme for second derivative we need to know two points ahead of this xi similarly for backward scheme we require two consecutive points behind this uh, xi and for a center difference we see that this xi point where we want to evaluate the second order derivative lies in between i plus 1 and i minus 1. Now regarding the accuracy of each method we see that with the increase uh, of number of data points we could improve uh, the accuracy of our estimation. We can precisely determine the accuracy uh, from the Taylor series, where we can truncate the series and look for the order of the step size of the next term, which eventually determines the order of accuracy. But for, for this lab, lower order method is sufficient and help us learn better. Let's do an example in MATLAB how we can represent the derivatives. Here we have 12 equally spaced data points uh, along with the function values at those points. We are asked here to determine first and second order derivatives at each point and the scheme must be second order accurate. If we consider evaluating first derivative at the first point, we require three points to maintain second order accuracy. 
in MATLAB we can write the formula easily but make sure how you were defining the variables here dy denotes first uh, derivative and it doesn't matter how you define it but be careful that uh, the bracket after the parameter means that MATLAB is storing the value in in a table where the number designates its position and on the right side we simply write the uh, formula according to the finite difference scheme where brackets uh, for x and y denote that the position of the data point and function values respectively for example xi represents the data points minus 1 x2 represents the data point minus 0 0.5 y1 represents function values minus 3.632 at data point minus 1 y2 shows the function magnitude at data points minus 0 0.5 for the second derivative at the first uh, data point, we require uh, four data points to ensure that the scheme is second order accurate. Now to estimate the first order derivative at the last uh, point, having second order accurate, uh, we cannot use the uh, forward um, method since there is no data points ahead of, of, of this point. So we use the backward difference scheme considering three points so that the order of accuracy is two for the first derivative. The same goes for the second derivative where to maintain second order accuracy we need four points uh, in the backward direction. As you can see in refers here the length of the data points which is 12 for our example and is the last point. To calculate the derivatives at all other points in between the first and last points we can create a simple for loop in MATLAB to represent the derivatives as well as our respective data points and function values for example we should begin uh, the loop from second data point that will end at the second last data point uh, which is uh, n minus 1 you can see that for these points, we do not need forward or backward methods to ensure second order accuracy. Instead, we use two points center method for the first derivative and three point center method for the second derivative. After we are done with evaluating our first and second derivatives at those 12 data points, that have second order accuracy. We can plot them sequentially in MATLAB by using the uh, subplot command. Here, first plot shows the function with respect to the data points. The second plot is for the first derivative. And the third one is for second derivative at uh, the corresponding data points. Since there are three plots altogether, uh, by the bracket, uh, uh, of this uh, plot command we mention the position of the plot for example uh, 3 refers the total number of plots then 1 refers the figure number which is 1 and the next one actually the plot itself integration is uh, simply the opposite of the concept of differentiation for numerical integration in this lab 
we are going to briefly discuss Newton Court's method from which we can derive subsequent four formulas such as midpoint, trapezoidal, Simpson's one-third, and three by eight rules. Here, let's assume that we are integrating a function f of x in the interval a to b, where the function is considered as, as a nth order polynomial. And according to the power of this polynomial function, we end up with different uh, integration methods. For example, when the power n is 0, we only have the first term of the polynomial that actually represents us uh, the midpoint rule. When the power is 1, we have trapezoidal rule with the first two terms from the polynomial equation. When n is 2, we have Simpson's one-third rule and for n equals to 3, we get Simpson's uh, 3 by 8 rule. In your assignment for problem 2, there is a term mentioned error function. So what does it mean actually? Error function comes from the integral of a uh, standard uh, normal distribution, which gives you an idea of the probability that a parameter of interest lies within a range. In MATLAB, the function ERF determines that. For example, if we like to know the error function of a number, we simply use the function that returns the probability of that number is within it within the defined range similarly for a matrix we can determine the error function 